Well, here we are. The first feeder fishing session of 2021. It is the 2nd of April. It's just gone half past eight in the morning. I've had three bites. I've managed to hook one roach. And as I was bringing it in, uh, Jack Pike shot out from underneath the feet here and smashed it up. So, when I'm looking for pike, I can't fucking get them. But I don't want them to be here. They're here. Uh. Anyway, let's see what today brings, shall we? Something different. The first feeder fishing session of the year, I guess. Beautiful day. I've been catching some roach. Not feeding anything special. Struggled to get hold of bait. We'll talk about that in a minute. Fishing opposite Ballina Lake Marina. They're putting in new public stands across from me. Yet I thought they would have had this done, you know, like three months ago, but I suppose when you're taking money from the bottomless pit that is the public purse. Who cares if you're a little over cost and a little late? Taxman's got deep pockets, eh? Had a really nice hybrid as well. Let's go through what we're using. Just got a wee bite there, distracted me. Talk about ground bit. I'm using a kilo today, a mix of uh, black crumb and census 3000 uh, Nor Gardons, which means like black roach. It's the one with the pigeon shell on it, as you'll see by the little purple dots on my fingers. That's the pigeon shit. You don't need to chuck a ton of ground bit in. I'm just fishing with a window feeder. Putting lots of caster in the window feeder and you're putting it out. Only really using caster and maggots because I only really have caster and maggots. I don't have anything else. I had to go to England to order worms, they'll be here next week. I got them from Willie's Worms. I got maggots and casters from Irish Bait and Tackle by the Cavan across the Republic of Ireland. Bit of a clusterfuck with that. The package spent an extra day out of the delivery van, sent to the wrong place, so you know, what can you do? So when it got to me, the casters were, uh, well, anyone that knows fishing with casters, if you leave them out too long, they get uh, a little bit scorched. So my half gallon of casters was, well, I'm using what I can out of it. Some of them are all right. I spoke to Irish Tackle and Bait and they're gonna send me uh, some gratis casters the next time I order from them. This is the problem when you can't go to a shop and actually see what you're buying. Hopefully the shops start to open up again soon.
So, drone bits, maggots. Standard sort of feeder rod. I'm using my Dutch Master. It's the 60 gram one. The extremis reel that you saved me get last year. It's built up with bread. Two rod lengths of 12 pound shock leader. Through to a 5.6 pound Drennan suplex hook length of about four and a half, five feet to a size 12 Guru feeder special hook. Beautiful day. Absolutely beautiful day. I need a haircut because I look like a dirty hippie. But such is life, I guess. See, in all my dirty hippie glory. And it's a bit slow. Started off quite fast, you know, getting kind of sort of hot, quickish bites. It was hilarious the first fight you actually got kind of close to me, a pike snatched. <laughs> I spent all winter trying to catch pike and uh, come feeder fishing. And Start to see pike. Maggots, feeder, big daft swans are wrestling with each other. Still kind of using a bait up feeder. This is a 60 or 50 gram Guru bait up feeder. I'm trying to put a lot of bait, or trying to put the uh, bait down. So you take your little handful of caster, put them into your feeder, like so. Fill up the window with ground bait. So, and then it is ready to get chucked out. I'm not actually fishing very far out here. Centre of the river, if that. The 
This part of the river is fairly deep, so I'm hoping that helps today. So I got a thing that I normally for when I first cast the feeder rod out or the feeder out. I don't just chuck it in the stand and leave it. I hold it in my hands. What well, you'll find is the feeders crash to the bottom. The hook bait will be coming down nice and slow. And sometimes you'll get the odd fish ticking it like that there. Now I think I missed this one. This is why I fish with sort of a longer tail. Yeah, I missed this one. That's why you fish with sort of a longer tail. So as the feeder hits the deck, your ground, your maggots coming down, and the uh, the hybrid that's sitting usually kind of off the bottom. It can then have a bash at your hook bit. But that is the tactics. Let's get another, let's just chuck a one that's just full of ground bit. And that's us on the bottom. Just hold the rod. If you see if you get any sort of bite indications, or any sort of bites. If it was match fishing, I'd be casting a feeder out every kind of 90 seconds to two minutes. But I'm just pleasure fishing. So that means I just get to chuck a feeder, relax, and wait till the fish come to me. Now that that fish hasn't, nothing's took it, nothing's hit it, I'm just going to set it in the rod rest. Again, I'm still holding the rod. Tip's only bent slightly. And then we watch the tip. And hopefully something comes along and says that they want to eat the maggots. at the minute nothing is uh, deciding that it wants to eat them so we'll just give it another five minutes well three minutes then we'll wind in fill the ground bait feeder up again and chuck it out again and that's today's uh, plan of action bit more relaxed.
since you've last seen me, it's been a pretty crap uh, week. But this means we have to go back to July last year. July last year, a filling in the back molar of my tooth fell out. So I phoned the dentist. My original dentist told me that they were no longer accepting NHS patients anymore. So I had to find a new dentist. And that took a lot of ringing around. Eventually I got into to a, a Bupa dentist. And they phoned them and they got an appointment with them and they put an emergency filling into the, the, tooth, the tooth. That lasted like a month and then fell out again. So they phoned again. Asked, you know, when am I getting an appointment to get this tooth fixed? Got told they'll get back to me. They're very busy. Covid, blah blah blah. And that was the story. Pretty much every month I phoned and said, what's the story we're getting this tooth fixed? And every month I got told, COVID, can't do it, COVID, busy, blah, 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 we'll get back to you. Well, just shortly after the video, Went la la the last video went live. I've got a bit of a headache, felt a bit sick. So I took like a, an early night, went to bed. The next morning I woke up and there was a, a tennis ball sized lump on the side of my face. And I felt really poor. And I was getting a, a shoot a pain that kind of went to the bottom, the middle of my bottom lip, right down to my collarbone, which was awesome, by the way, beautiful, absolutely beautiful pain. Phoned up dentist, quite irate this time. And they give me antibiotics for the infection. And uh, roofing, I was roofing to stop the swelling. They told me that there was an infection and they couldn't touch me until it took the seven days of antibiotics. So I did. I was uh, popping Sulfidine Max painkillers on top of my normal meds. Just to kind of get some sleep. I was surviving on soup. This is the only thing I could fucking put in my mouth with my mouth screaming in agony. Anyway, yesterday the dentist phoned me and says they have an opening, they have an opening appointment. They can see me. Can you come in and see us? I said fucking yes I can, no worries. And I was in there ten minutes early. The man said to me, because the infection is so bad, we're going to have to extract the tooth. The tooth can't be saved. The tooth got pulled. Which was awesome in itself, like getting your tooth pulled out. So yesterday, I spent the day kind of with a face that was numb, then when the numb wore off, it was pain. So today is like the first day in 10 days where I actually feel like a human being again. Where I don't want to take a pair of pliers and pull the fucking tooth out of my own head. Dental pain is the worst, man. Absolute worst. I have a 
hole in the back of my tooth, back of my gum, which means I can't eat. Which is okay, because I'm on liquid until I think it heals over. It'll be about three days before it heals over. <sighs> three days. And then I'm going on the whiskey. Having a toothache sucks. A few moments later. The sun is now right in my face. <laughs> the weather apps is it's 14 degrees, which is awesome. Fishing slow, but what can you do, you know? I want to say a big shout out to uh, young Tom and Anders Gillen who watches the videos. Thank you, Tom. Glad that you're enjoying the uh, enjoying the videos. <laughs> no, no, that one's a mess. That one's a mess. Just using three red maggots. Nothing special. too much into that cast. There was a fella came past on a uh, inflatable boat who offered me a beer. I didn't take the beer because I'm driving. But if he watches this, thanks very much for offering me the beer. Most welcome. You know, I'm kind of constantly amazed by um, people coming up to me, either fishing or like in Tesco's and the skill and want to chat to me. Keeping the bit going on. I cast every three minutes. The bites I'm getting just seem to be like little nutted and the maggots are smashed, so. But first day course fishing of this year. My face feels like I've been hitting up with a brick. Because I was taking so many painkillers for so many days, today I'm not actually taking any painkillers. Bar the usual 
Uh, ads that I take. So my lower jaw feels like I've been uh, smashed in it with a brick. Oh no! Maggots just get smashed. was that there so just continue to put the bait on That's a large Guru window feeder, 50 grams. Of course, the bad thing about the weather, temperatures rising, is that the Boat traffic tends to get more uh, frequent. You just have to deal with that when you're fishing or skilling. Or anywhere that's relatively busy. I don't think I'll be staying out too late. I think I'll probably go home a bit earlier today. Not that I'm wanting you to feel sorry for me or anything. But I haven't been able to eat solid food for a while, so... Chance uh, noodles or something, something soft. It wasn't funny when the guy pulled the tooth out, but when the guy pulled the tooth out, you know, there's like the sucker tube, sucking tube you have in your mouth. Like the little suction tube was like red because obviously you're bleeding, you have the tooth pulled. And the guy pulled the tooth, and the sucker tube went bright orange. So there was quite a lot of goo in underneath the tooth. Awesome, isn't it? with how much meat was actually stuck to the tooth because he showed me it afterwards and you're like okay this is the it's hard to think something like this big in your jaw causes you so much pain but what 
What can you do, yeah? So now I'm kind of drinking the gazade because I have a strange taste in my mouth that I'm putting down to the, the abscess. So I am uh, spitting everything out. Which is awesome. Dentist said it'll be about three to five days. And there should be uh, no more pain in the tooth or where the tooth was. So I just have to put on the big boy pants for the next next few days and man through it. Hoping to be fishing this weekend with Cecil. So that'll be fun. Always good times when I'm out fishing with Cecil. <laughs> How am I missing these bites? I didn't miss it. There we go. A fish on camera. Again, the tip ripped around, and it was that <laughs> little perch. That's actually the first one today, or well, the first one I've seen. Beautiful fucking day. Pardon my language. I'm trying not to swear so much. My mother informed me that she watches the videos. And she doesn't like it when I swear. Now normally, I swear a lot. I don't, half the time I don't mean it to do it. I don't realise I'm doing it. But it kind of dawned on me that as my uh, family kind of said that the baby that's due, you know, it's going to be here end of May, start of July. And 
little babies can be like little sponges. So they tend to absorb sweary words. So that's best I try and uh, cut down the French. Bit weird, isn't it? I'm gonna be a dad. Can't wait. We're gonna go up at the end of uh, April to do one of those 4D scan things. Looking forward to that. Keep getting asked, do we know what we're having? Nope. As long as it pops out healthy, don't care. As long as it's healthy. Mrs. Scobie and the uh, baby come through the thing both healthy and happy. That's all I care about. <sighs> Loving this sunshine today. Definitely loving it. to change from coming out fishing in the winter time when there's uh, you know, snow and ice on the ground and coming out today and it's a nice gentle breeze that doesn't want to blow the shit out of you in 13 14 degrees it's almost mankini weather for the one big wrap round of the tip. There we go, there's a, that looks like a bait. That was a bit more subtle.
I'll carry on and see if there's any more fish I can show you. More moments later. And we have something better. On the one big bite I managed to hit it. I get asked why am I using a shock leader? Well, use a shock leader because the, uh, the zebra mussels chew through your main line. In the days of where the days of old where you could use a four pound mono line through to your through to your hooks, long gone. I'm also casting a 50 gram feeder, although I'm not having to cast it that far today. Because I'm not casting it really, really far. I don't have to put any, uh, I don't have to load the cast. But however, if you're casting like a two ounce feeder that's full, and you're having to really load your cast, your because you're using a braided main line, you can't use braid direct to your feeder because you'll just snap off. So you use a shock leader. The shock leader is designed so you can cast without breaking off. And so that when you're setting the hook, there's like a little bit of a, a bungee effect for the fish so that they can they can have they can fight and they can tug and of course your rod's gonna take a lot of the your rod will take a lot of the, the pressure of this too but there you go That was two fish relatively quick succession. So, even though that it's quite sunny, I'm still going to have to uh, keep the bait going in. When you cast, even if you have, because you've got it clipped up, cast, then lift your rod up. So it hits the clip, the momentum pulls your rod forward. If you cast, and you really, really put the beans into it, and you hit your clip with the rod pointing down, the chances are, there is a chance that you'll snap off at the reel because you're testing, there's nothing to cushion the blow. Whereas when you're feeder, when you're casting your feeder, if you cast out and you have your rod cast, then just lift your rod up so that when it hits the clip, it pulls the rod down. That just is like a cushion so that you're not cracking off. There was a pike that followed that bit in, not that, that, that skimmer in. 
just as I got it onto onto the net, the pipe kind of appeared about about a foot from the net. So there's a little jack pike out there who's quite hungry. He's had four of my fish today. It goes to show you about uh, live bits tend to be more successful than dead bits. Because the river's moving, the rod tip kind of is like that there, so it's just got a kink in it, a little bit of a kink. You'll find that all the bites that I've been getting today have been one big rip like that there. Haven't had any drop back bites at all today. It's just been one big sharp tug and then it's just ripped the maggots off the hooks. That's why I'm holding the rod at all times. <laughs> or if I'm not holding it, I'm putting it into the, the uh, into a way so that if a, if a fish did smash it, it's not going to go out of the rest. I don't know how many fish I've had today. I haven't really been counting. I do set the rod tip down or the rod down and I'm not holding it. The first eye of the rod is basically sitting on this side of the rod rest and the butt of the rod is kind of in a, an ar a, ro a rod butt holder on the side of my seat box. So it doesn't really have any sort of chance to go anywhere. Gonna do feeder fishing, you've gotta have a, a hand towel. Okay, let's see what we got today. The net's hardly busted. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten fish. The best of them, the best of them being this hybrid. Nice little hybrids. Well, I'll 
take a, a photograph of them. Two seconds fish, come on, two seconds, and then you're all going back in. Right. There we go. Ten fish, half a day's session. Now I'm going to go and take painkillers because my face feels like I've been hit by a brick. Until next time, tight lines.